Hey everyone, in this video I've got one growth stock that's down 69% off the high that I think makes an excellent investment right now. So I'm going to share with you what the growth stock is and why I'm recommending it as a stock including the revenue growth, the profitability, the cash flow from operations and the valuation along with the recent updates. So let's jump right in and let's see what this growth stock is. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so the growth stock I'm talking about here is Digital Ocean Holdings. It's down 68.97% off the high, and I think investors might regret not buying it on this dip here. In the recent updates, Revenue increased by 11% to $181 million. Net income was up to $16 million and net profit margin was 9%. This is a profitable company now. And cash flow from operations of $81 million was up from $65 million in the fourth quarter of 2022. An increase of roughly 25% in cash flow from operations. Looking at the company longer term, you can see revenue growth has increased significantly up to $692 million in the most recent trailing 12-month period. That was up from around $335 million in January of 2021. The company has also demonstrated economies in scale. Economies in scale is one of the most desirable characteristics you can find in an investment. In the example I have created here, sales grow from $100 in year 1 to $115.76 in year 4, while net income more than doubles from $4.50 to $9.47 in year 4. This company demonstrates economies in scale. As its revenue grows, its profits grow by a larger magnitude. Not every company can achieve this kind of effective growth. Here's how it works. This is a typical categorization of an income statement of a publicly traded company. Cost of goods sold is what's called a variable expense. That means cost of goods sold is connected to sales. Other expenses like interest, general and admin, and depreciation are not connected to sales. You can see here depreciation stays the same at 25 whether sales increase or not. The same is true for interest expense. It stays the same whether sales grows or not. You can understand your interest payments do not increase when your sales increase. Overall, businesses typically have a mixture of fixed expenses that are unrelated to sales and variable expenses that are. When sales increase, the business leverages those fixed expenses, as we see in this example, and profits grow by a larger magnitude than the increase in sales. So now that you understand why that's important, look at the metric increasing here from negative 6% in 2021, all the way up to 4.73% in the most recent trailing 12-month period. And that's up even more significantly if you look back just over 2023. The company made improvements to the bottom line, to the operating expense structure, and now it's demonstrating leverage and demonstrating economies in scale. I also want you to consider the cash flow from operations. Cash flow from operations is one of the most vital metrics I consider when making an investment decision. If any financial shenanigans are happening, looking at this metric can help uncover the fraud. Moreover, looking at profitability without considering cash flow from operations can lead to a misleading picture of a company's performance. For instance, look at the example I have created here. The company reported a net loss of $250. However, when you look at the cash flow from operations, it was a gain of $35. How can that be? Well, two expenses a company must report on the income statement are depreciation and stock-based compensation. Importantly, these are non-cash expenses. Money is not leaving the company for these expenses. In the case of depreciation, when a company buys a machine for $750, it pays all of that price up front. However, generally accepted accounting principles require that the company take the expense over a period the machine is expected to operate. So if the machine is expected to last for 10 years, the annual expense will be $75 per year 
for 10 years, even though the company paid the $750 cash at the time of the purchase. Also, when a company offers its employees a stock option, it's not parting with cash. However, it must record the cash value of the option as an expense on the income statement. So moving on to the working capital items, inventory management is the easiest way a company can increase cash flow. The simplest case is when a business has 100 inventory units, sells 30 units, and doesn't replace those units. The decision would reduce total inventory and increase cash flow. As you might already be thinking, this isn't sustainable. Eventually, the company will deplete all its inventory and go out of business. Accounts payable is the money that a company owes another company and has not paid yet. And accounts receivable is the opposite. A company can increase its cash flow by collecting payments faster and paying suppliers slower. If done with skill, companies at scale can take advantage of these timing differences to boost cash flow by a couple of percent annually. Costco is one example that employs this strategy masterfully. Overall, if you observe cash flow increasing unsustainably, you should expect a reversal of that trend. The other big risk to consider is if you see a company reporting substantial profits, but negative or weak cash flow due to rising accounts receivable. So now that you understand this metric, you can see the significant increase here. 33.91% in cash flow from operations was up from around 18% in 2021. And this metric, 34%, nearly is a strong metric to be sure, especially for a company that's still in growth mode. So all of these metrics are very, very good for Digital Ocean Holdings. And you would think the stock is trading at an expensive valuation, but it's not. Digital Holdings is trading at Digital Ocean Holdings, I should say, is trading at a forward price to earnings of just 21.78, which is roughly near the cheapest you've been able to buy this stock going all the way back to early 2021. There's moments where you could have bought this stock at a cheaper valuation in late 2023, but for the most part, it's been more expensive given the company's excellent prospects. It's growing nicely, demonstrating economies and scale and self-sufficient with strong cash flow from operations near 30%. So for all these reasons and the continued growth prospects, I think Digital Ocean Holdings is one growth stock that long-term investors might do really well by adding to their portfolios. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.